The season is in full swing. Transfers here, transfers there, transfers everywhere. As we are expecting the imminent news of Tialo Kerrer signing for West Ham, according to several reports, it is a done deal. And when that is announced officially, we will be back on to talk to you about him officially signing for West Ham. But, but we are hearing reports that Hans Vanneken is allegedly very keen to join West Ham from Club Bruges in this summer transfer window. Now you're asking me, who is Hans Vanneken? Well, you have come to the right place to get the right bit of information as we discuss all things Hans Vanneken. There's a little error there in that last bit of the video. He's not a number 10 career. He will be, hopefully, our new centre-back signing. So um, good luck to him. And when it does happen, we will come back on. But I hope you're all safe and well. And please leave your comments in the comment section. I will go through them as much as I possibly can. Um, but we are hearing more reports about players that are interested in coming to the club and also more reports of West Ham linked to loads of players. But I thought I'd hone in in particular on Hans Vanneken because he is a player that we've been looking at for a, a while now. You know, we were linked to him last year and I supposedly he opted to stay at Club Bruges and didn't want to move. There's a whole host of other European clubs that are interested in him. But according to reports, the player who is 29 years old only for another seven days because he does turn 30 on, I believe, the 24th of August. Wants to move to the London Stadium, um, but our first bid for the player has been rejected. Now, he did go and bag 16 goals and seven assists in 45 games in the 2021 season and racked up 15 goals and 12 assists in um, his outings last term. He is standing at six feet five tall. Could you imagine adding that power, that height to the current team? I think we would then in the, on, be on par with one of the tallest teams, if not the tallest teams in the Premier League. And he is a real unit and is the kind of physicality, he's got that physicality that could lead to him being a successful player in the Premier League. Now, the one problem that we as fans are concerned about is what I've mentioned already, that he turns 30 later this month. And that obviously doesn't correlate to the Red Bull model that David Moyes supposedly wants to implement at the London Stadium. However, however, that doesn't mean that we should turn our nose up to players who are of that age because they have a real quality and ability to put to the plate and, and cause opposition teams problems and they fit that that jigsaw that unity that that, that we see um, and just because they're not one of the the, the, the well recognized footballers that we are supposedly wanting to be linked to that doesn't mean that they can't be a success to West Ham we have to look at the model that David Moyes has followed so far when we signed Tommy Suchek not many people knew about Tommy Suchek and look how his career has panned out at West Ham majority of the time it's been great. Yes, people are calling for upgrades in specific areas, but it, 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 as a whole, it's been a successful career. Vladimir Safal is another one. You know, Moyes doesn't have to look at the players that are at the, 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 the at, you know, I don't know, what household names that everyone talks about. Moyes has got a scouting system that he obviously feels comfortable with and he finds the right players to mould into that system. So he's obviously found that, and Hans Vanneken with what he's looking at. Now, we are led to believe that West Ham are interested in bringing him in, and Hans Vanneken has now done a U-turn and is very interested in coming to the English Premier League. But I will talk more further in detail about him in a second as I jump into the chat, see who's kicking about, and we'll get started as well. you got to have patience when you're a West Ham fan. Absolutely dynamite absolutely Absolutely, you do. But we all know that. We all know that because if you've been supporting West Ham long enough, 
as I have and, and you have and as my dad has and as people watching have, you will know that as well. Uh, hi all from Down Under, Evil X6 Boy, good to see you. David Stacey, afternoon all. Richard Brown and afternoon everyone, hope you're all having a great day. Hopefully some good news by the end of the day. Hopefully, um, yeah, it will be. Afternoon all, Adam Cook, Andy Wilson, today, Papa Firth, afternoon Irons. Hi guys from Simon, good to see you, my friend. Never think a player is ours until he's wearing our colours. And I agree with that sentiment. I'm just going to look into what Hans Vanneken could bring to West Ham as well. Freno, good to see you, my friend. Hope you're hope you're well. No, let's just see. Yes, this is Ryan, the same player who apparently rejected us two years ago. Um, we're waiting on uh, I mean, it'll probably happen knowing my luck during the show as well. So just keep an eye on that one. Afternoon, Anton. Hope you're well. We are. How are you all from Sydney? Hi, Anton from Freno. When we going to be announced in the PSG man, it's going to be happening today. He's at the training ground. His medical supposedly being completed according to Fabrizio Romano. So we're expecting an announcement to be made in due course. So um, apparently if he is being announced before 11 p.m. and the paperwork has been done before 11 p.m., he could be available to play the game in the playoff uh, in, in, in the conference tomorrow evening against Viborg. But we'll have to wait and see. Alan, even Anton, one in. And another two or three would be great. Absolutely. Andy Wilson's in the house. Good to see you. Let's hope the medical goes well. We have a new centre-back today. When will the club announce career? Very, very soon. Middle, Cole, and personal terms agreed for career. When is the deadline for him to play the weekend? Well, if he signs today, he is fine. So don't worry about that. Uh, underwhelming signing, to be honest. I think that's what it goes back to me talking about household names. Um, we will, when he goes live, when when the announcement is made about career, we'll talk more Um official about that as well charlie saying when we're going to make career official just keep your eye on the channel you'll see it it's amazing what a week makes last week no one wants to join west ham now we have one that rejects seville for us and two more that want to join us over anyone else it's a very good point there john as well afternoon robs good to see you hardly next level you never know car uh, scarborough saying career there you go three your contract for vanikin tommy black afternoon everyone how you doing anton i'm well thank you very much hope you are well uh when do you expect the career and Uh, when do you expect the career announcement? Um, if you start via Brighton, I think it will be happening today. Don't worry about that. Uh, Sky reporting, absolutely. Absolutely. Got to do his video. So the media team are going to be working on him as well. However, let me move into Hans Vanneken because we're, we, we, once one deal is getting done, there's other deals getting done in the background. Now, the paradox of Hans Vanneken, he is the king of his league without succeeding in crossing to the big leagues. Is he too strong for the Belgian league? But not enough for a really bigger league out there and after his trophy for the best player in belgium for 2018 and he's won a lot of accolades in belgium he received zero offers from abroad back in 2018 however since then west ham borussia dortmund sevilla have all been interested have all been interested in bringing this player in but nothing concrete has happened since then now when a talent develops itself in the belgium league the clock is already ticking down at the moment that that player leaves that league and hans vanneken is a rare commodity when it comes to the quality of player who has stayed and flourished at club bruges the twice belgium player of the year in the belgium national squad has been a key figure for the club's dominance in the Belgium league. He's tall, he's technical, he's thin. Um, he's got a very, very strong presence in the midfield for Club Bruges. Um, and he does play as either a number eight or a number 10. Well, he's not blessed with a lot of pace, his vision, his intelligence, and his wand of a left foot gives you the illusion that he's more time on the ball than everyone else around him. And I'm not even ridiculously joking here now. Not, uh, please bear with me with what I say here. We're linked to a player. We do our due diligence. We read scout reports. We watch some videos and we try and build up what we think, what we take for what we think David Moyes is looking for in a player and add that to the equation of would he make a good West Ham player? We create these shows for you because we've done our due diligence to look into the player and we try and match them up. So I can see when I'm looking at it, why he would be a West Ham player. And he doesn't have, he's not a fast player, but he does cover a lot of ground, which I will show you in his current, uh, his last season's heat map. Look at the amount of ground that he covers 
in the league. He is an absolute dominant midfielder in whatever role he is asked to do. Um, so that's totally interesting to see. Uh, so, like I said, in all the matches that he's played for, he has scored a lot of goals. He's been involved in a lot of assists. And he's a, got a graceful a presence in arriving at the box at the perfect time. And it's become one of the most common sights in the Belgium league. Now, a signature moment came for Club Bruges when they were playing Andalect a few seasons ago. Um, and it's known as a very big rival rivalry in Belgium. He A blocked free kick rebounded from the wall high in the air towards Vanneken in the middle of the opposition half. And he followed the flight of the ball with a Zidane-like concentration and used its momentum to smash an absolute belter of a volley that clipped the inside of the post. Um, and in a big game and a big domestic rival, that was a trademark of the player who can make the impossible look easy so it doesn't have to be blessed with a huge amount of pace. Now reaching his peak at 29, going on 30, all logic suggests it's time for Vanekin to potentially jump ship and test himself on a greater stage. Yet, West Ham did go calling last year, but he turned us down and opted to sign a five-year deal in Belgium. And he reasoned that guaranteed first-team football at Bruges potentially was best for his career and allowed him to challenge for trophies and, of course, the Champions League, which is tough for any fan to go against because he has won trophies and he has been called up to the national team and he does play Champions League football. But he is quietly spoken family man. He keeps himself to himself. Um, and I think it's interesting to see if he wants to test himself in a bigger league. Now, the fact that Club Bruges are able to keep players such as Vanneken has cemented their position as the, probably the best team in Belgium. It is probably the difference of them winning the league or not. They have got rid of some of their best players, but they've managed to hold on to Vanneken and another one of their better players. But really getting rid of them, it's not within their interest to get rid of them because they really are... The, the, the reasons why they push forward as well. In the season before last, Club Bruges only lost one single game on the way to the title. Again, last season, winning the title once again. And with regular Champions League football and a 40,000 planned new seater stadium, it's going to be tough for the, you know, it's, it's going to be tough for any other team to really challenge Club Bruges as it stands in Belgium. Um, now, he has been one of the finest footballers in Belgium for several years. He's got good feet. He's strong. Uh, he's got a good insight to his running. His scoring ability is of the highest quality. And he gets better every year. And sometimes they say, you know, like a fine wine, it, 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 it gets better the older it gets, you know. And he does get better every year. And he has everything that football teams want. Vision, technique, the right mentality, and a scoring ability. So... Why would one of the best players in Belgium not receive offers from abroad? That's not great. Is he ready to make the move abroad? I, I, I'm, I'm of the mindset. He's not a household name. He's not a household name. However, if he fits the jigsaw piece that I've mentioned before, then we need to go forward and move forward to get a guy like this and the quality potentially that he could offer to the team. So allowing him to move to West Ham would not be a good move for... Uh, Club Blue Bruges as well. And for that reason, um, I, I don't know what's going to happen with this one. Now, apparently West Ham have had a deal revoked and, and, and they, they want more money for him if that deal is going to go happen. Uh, it's going to go ahead. But I wonder if one of the negative things for him coming to the Premier League is, is he too slow to make it abroad because he doesn't have much pace? Would that have a, a negative impact on him making it in the Premier League? He's not the fastest of footballers. And, but he does make up for more than that with his thinking and his execution of the game of football. He's tactically aware as he can read the game extremely, extremely well. Not many footballers have that gift. They really, really don't. I think only sometimes in, in, in life you get a handful of players that could read the game and execution of the game to the highest level. And he is one of those players. It seems to be that he is one of those players. Um, so... Some think that he would not fit into a high-press system in the bigger leagues. But I think if his reading of the game is to the highest quality that people say he is, then why not? But he is what they classify as an easiest, the best midfielder in the Belgium league. And he's proved that yet again, week after week, year after year. And he's committed his time to Club Bruges. So maybe his underrated, unobtrusive style and his lack of pace is making him an unattractive you know, offer to 
clubs in the big leagues, but he is a fantastic footballer on the ball. Almost a throwback to the 90s skillful number 10s. And his ability to keep the game ticking, pick the right pass, reach the box at the right moment to score regularly is a huge asset to any team. So keep your comments in and let me know your thoughts on potentially Vanekin coming to the club whilst you watch this video of everything you need to know about Hans and Vanekin. with so much winning mentality, so much pedigree. I just wonder if David Moyes potentially could unearth an absolute diamond in the rough by bringing Vanekin to the club on top of the fact that um, uh, we're obviously signing career any moment now. I mean, it's, it's due to probably get announced any second. I wouldn't be surprised. So just keep your eye, of course, on... Um, the channel and we'll give you the news. I'm going to jump through the chat and see what everyone else is having to say here. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Vanekin is class. I think he is. I really do. I, doesn't, I know his age really puts people off sometimes, but I wouldn't worry about that. I really wouldn't worry about that at all. Um, I'm good afternoon, Al Anton. How are you, mate? Hans is a perfect acquisition to throw in for a Europa conference. Um, I'd be signing Vanekin all day for 10 million with his intention of playing him as a sub number 10. It's meant to be a starter or possibly a suit replacement and underwhelming for me. Um, sometimes you need these players, though, that can make the step up to progress a club. And if it means that you get two years of the best from Vanekin, then that doesn't is, isn't a negative thing for a West Ham to progress. Um, and if you listen to David Moyes, he makes the valid point about West Ham by saying that we're trying to sign players that move us into the top six. And we're in that transition period where maybe we might struggle to get players. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to see um, how this one pans out, of course, as well. How many central defenders do we need? Well, I think we're going to need a few more, if I'm being brutally honest with you, because with Aguero's long-term injury, hopefully we'll be back by some point in November. Um, career brings the average age of that central defence down dramatically, and, and we're definitely going to need that as well. 
Um, just get them done and focused so we can be improving the league position and winning the Euro Conference. Next challenge will be when Moyes plays these players. I think he's going to have no choice but to play some of these players as well. Everyone was gunning for Lingard and Kostic, both nearly 30. There you go, Scarborough. You, you've hit the nail on the head, 100%. Uh, Papa Firth, morning, Scott. Now, that's dedication. Would give us options in mid. Wonder where that leaves Suchek. And yet Suchek plays every game. We need a hero. Um, where are we hearing rumours in the One Football app that Moyes uh, has earmarked him for a move? Who's that? Happy Hammerettes in the house. Good to see you. Thank you very much. It's the hair. It's the hair. You're loving it. You're loving it. Uh, with his Champions League experience scoring big goals against top sides, got to be an upgrade on Suchek. Um, where are we? Please tell me the bone transfer I'm hearing is another wind up. Yes, it is. Don't believe the hype. Don't, don't, don't believe the hype. Please don't. Bones going nowhere, absolutely. Uh, I've seen that Elon Musk has been on Twitter saying some crazy rants, and it, as part of that, he said he was going to sign Man uh, own or buy Manchester United. I think the guy was losing the plot a bit yesterday. Uh, is it me, or does it look like the team have lost half a yard of pace and stamina? Maybe some more backroom staff to improve players that we have. I think we will hopefully kickstart our season. What a way to kickstart our season. If we can go and get a victory against Fiverr tomorrow, go and get a victory against Brighton, a team we've never beaten in the Premier League, and bang, um, Bosch, there you go, two, two victories on the trot, kind of takes you away from what's been going on over the last couple of days as well. Uh, oh, we're slow, Corny helps, absolutely. We've never had our best players, they always go. Stupid how our players piss around at the back and never go forwards. I'm buying my <laughs> you need to put my shares on Twitter. Um, Graham is saying Trevor Brooklyn wasn't the quickest, but never stopped him from being fantastic, absolutely. Yeah, we're the slowest team in the Prem and the oldest. I'm seeing it uh, here, Bones going, and if I'm right, I want Anton and Russ in the hot tub. It's an interesting uh, thing as well. Phil, good to see you, mate. Vanakin looks decent, absolutely. Uh, does anyone know if the deal for Taylor Kerr has gone through? We're just waiting on the final details from the club. Um, like we always say, like we always say, um, if you, you hear from all the ITKs, Fabrizio Romano, etc., um, that the deal is done, but I never say anything until the, uh, the player is announced that wearing the West Ham top. Uh, 29 isn't too old, but as a squad, we are very old. The transfer window has absolutely helped us get younger and slower, but we're still slow and old compared to the rest of the Premier League. Uh, the important thing is to freshen the squad if they fit the bill too. It's a good point, Phil. Absolutely, mate. 100% how are things going with uh, Emerson. Well, we'll hopefully see a bit of movement there. I think Chelsea want a bit more money, so I think we'll see that over um, time as well. Carrera looks class. can see him taking over. Safal's position once Aguerd is back. Wouldn't you promote Baptiste to the first team? Surely as a squad player to get some minutes under his belt with a view to regular starter. I think he'll be in and around the squad for maybe the conference. If we get through the playoffs, then I think that would be an option, but it's going to be tough for him as well. Um, I'm betting that Cornet will be our first goal scorer this season in all competitions. Uh, Scott is saying Alessio was much further ahead in development and he got moved on, so there we go. X is saying career is done. That's good enough for me. Uh, I've got, got to wait for put it on top, though. Okay, let me go. Let's get Eddie Van Hagen. Uh, 29 isn't too old. Look how good Modric still is at 34. Um, listen, I, I'm i not a hater. I don't care really what anyone says. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I am not a hater of the top. Um, no, no harm in putting a bit of, dashing a bit of colour into it. Um, People have lost the way by thinking that you have to have this and you have to have that. That's their opinion. That's up to them. But for me, it's uh, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Bring in Gallagher. I want this man. Papa, I want this geezer. This geezer can absolutely help West Ham dramatically. And you bring in Connor Gallagher while you've got options galore, left, right, and center. Emerson would be good if we sign uh, Lake and Parmy too. Baptiste is not good enough right now. Here's a question. Will we play Carreras right back once Aguero's back, or will it go to the back three with wing backs? I think what we've got is options, Scott, and I don't know if it's going to be, um, if it's going to look as simple as that. I think it's just going to give West Ham lots and lots and lots of options with players that are versatile that can play in different positions. Uh, Barry saying I would like to see Odebiku given another chance. I don't know, mate. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, but I. I've not been massively impressed with him. I know he scored a couple of goals for the under-23s or a goal for the under-23s the other day, but I'm just not too sure. Um, I like our black kit. Yeah, I do. But I just get annoyed. I, I, I get annoyed at 
football in general because I it annoys me that they release um, football tops every year. I know it's not just West Ham, it's everyone. I hate the fact that they release tops every year. It doesn't give the the real fan an opportunity to, to be able to afford to do it. You know, you've got to travel to games. You've got to buy the strips. If you've got a family, it costs a fortune. It's a ridiculous amount of money that you have to spend. And I'm seeing that now with my um, with my kids. I mean, I don't really tend to buy the top for myself anymore. Um, however, I do like the, the, the third strip. And I think I can understand, you know, kids will like it. Kids will like it. And I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, that's because you're young and hip, Anton. A bid for Nice was made for Diaz today. I've seen that. Gallagher with Rice and Downs all under 25. It's if we get him over the line. I'll definitely be buying the third shirt. Love the orange at the bottom. <laughs> Ginger. Uh, I hope it allows Moyes to have a plan B change formation instead of just players. I think some of the players we've got, Scott, once they come into the first team, gives West Ham the option now to change some of the players. Cornet, Downs, Skomaka. And have an Antonio move in different positions. We've got options once we get these players in the door. I think Newcastle have placed a bid in for Gallagher. I do, but what, 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 what's if it's, if it's only a loan, then you can't offer the player more money. It's going to be the money that he's currently on. So, what project are you going to take on board? Are Newcastle there? I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying, you know, for me, I, I'm not trying to say it from a West Ham's point of view, but I think he would want to come to West Ham. Back cutting the sun is a killer, though. Absolutely. Uh, for me, it'll be good. And Baptiste are not ready for the first team action. Our entire defence has looked a little bit lethargic and lacks match fitness. I wonder if Moyes is getting the boys fired up for the games. I think our defence has looked um, lethargic for a longer time than the last couple of seasons. We can see a lot of goals, and Moyes has said that. That's why he wants to bring players in as well. The hotter the furnace, the stronger the iron. Many people I've seen explode on social media over this new top has been a ridiculous thing. It's it's mental. Scarborough Carrera is back in a back three, but a very efficient right back played there in the Champions League. But when you're attacking players, do full uh, all tracking back. The defense is going to be exposed. He's been solid. <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> Mike is saying we'll say it again. The back four sort of the rest will fall in place, but get these players in absolutely. And career is class and could supplement Zuma as well. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to just give you some more stats on Vanekin. This is his current season stats. He's played four games and he started four of the games. He's only scored one goal so far. Uh, so far. Um, and then you can see there he's got an accurate pass rate of 83% per game. And he has a 79% accurate long balls for the whole season but i think the season before is the one that we're really interested in he played 39 games he started 36 times um he scored 11 goals with nine assists involved in 18 goals for club bruges as uh the belgium international so very effective 87 percent pass success rate per game and he had next 75 percent accurate long balls per game as well he had just under one interception per game. Tackles per game was over one. Um, and yeah, a very, very effective player uh, in general. So I can see him being a very good signing. And I know you all love to see them, but there is his heat map for the 21-22 season as well. Um, careers class could supplement Zuma. Um, do you lot rate Emerson? I suggest he's an instant upgrade on Cress. The thing is, he's obviously played at Leon last season, and he's obviously not going to be getting game time at Chelsea. He 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 initially underwhelmed me, but I had to just take myself back to the um the feeling. Oh, hold on a minute. Right. I'm coming back on because it's just been announced. So I tell you what. Come and join me in the chat for the next video as we talk to you about the official announcement that Carrere has signed for West Ham. It is official. See you in one minute. Ciao for now.